Good afternoon. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Himpania. Uh, today, I'm excited to talk about freedom cities. Uh, we're going to get into a discussion with uh, the uh, one of the uh, spokespeople for freedom cities uh, and and really what that means, what a freedom city is versus a sanctuary city. And, um, and then we're going to learn about something called the nine model. And I know a bit about that, but we're going to learn about that. And it is all based in some of the concepts through uh, the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. So for this conversation, please welcome to the show Miss Sophia Mendoza. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. And tell us a bit, uh, before we get started into all that stuff, tell us a bit about yourself, mm -hmm. where you've kind of come from, and how you've gotten to this place. OK. So uh, I'm newly retired from the military. Uh, and in the military, one of my, uh, the jobs I was most proud of was as equal opportunity advisors. Uh, as an equal opportunity advisor, I would um, provide equal opportunity training to soldiers because we have people come from all walks of life. They come into the military. Um, they need to be acquainted with, you know, these are the ways that the Constitution works. These are the ways that we have these protections for each one of us as soldiers, but also in our capacity as soldiers, we defend these uh, rights and uh, the Constitution. So this is a DOD initiative? No. No. No, that's just me. Okay, that's, that's just, just me. You. Yeah, that's just me. Okay, so oh. how I came to this was I was a soldier. I've retired. Now President Trump comes along and I'm inflamed. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? No, this is this is what I've been working years and years to educate people that this is not the way to conduct uh, an agenda, an agenda that is uh, arrogant and um, has a lot of prejudice in it, from my perspective. Clear pre it seems like it's clear prejudice, and it's not just prejudice. It is, it's targeted, mm -hmm. it's bigoted, mm -hmm. and when previous presidents, virtually every previous president, has made it clear, we don't want these things to occur, let's work together, we're one society, we're one nation, that was never Trump's message, right. and it is still not his message. He doesn't care that social injustice is getting worse. He doesn't doesn't seem to care that the the atrocities that are happening, mm -hmm. and I will call them atrocities that are happening, where you've got race baiting going on, mm -hmm. and and more and more racism and more and more bigotry, and it, whether whether it's LGBT uh, or race or, or or anything else, the people who look down at someone who has less or is homeless, mm -hmm. all of these things are being given a greater voice right. under Trump and greater strength to believe that they are justified to believe these things and not be more considerate and, and open to other people. So the intolerance level has, has grown, yeah. I think. And that's, yeah, so anyway, just okay. to elaborate on that thought, that's, that's the bothersome part. Right, so for years in the military, I uh, taught soldiers uh, about tolerance uh, but for all different types of groups. So. Uh, then I came to uh, Hawaii um, with my husband, and um, uh, I saw the agenda, Trump's agenda, and I was just like, I have to do something about this. I w would gladly be sitting at the beach, you know, in my retirement life, but I just really so feel so passionate about social justice. And uh, so what happened was, the way I came to this particular initiative is the uh, ACLU conducted a, a grassroots training event and I signed up and I met with a group of people who were taking in the training and learning about uh, the Freedom Cities Initiative. We formed a group together. Um, we are called uh, 808 RAN and uh, we are a product, uh, we're associated with the ACLU People Power uh, okay. Initiative. Okay, we're going to learn about all of that right. um, in a minute. So, okay, um, how did you find out about the, the training? So I was on Twitter. So on Twitter, I have a I have an account where I provide heart fuel for the resistance, <laughs> and it's just my way of using um, the skills that I've developed uh, with helping people to overcome um, challenges and uh, give them some fuel. Uh, kind of name things that are out there that they may not be familiar with. For instance, we were just talking about gaslighting. Yes. You know, and um, you know some of the 
the political poses of the of the alt right, you know, that are you know they're just flashpoints, and people really need to know about them. So as I was going through my Twitter, and uh, along with the other resistance members, um, the ACLU training came up, and I signed up. Okay, all right. So, so then through social media, you found this yes. opportunity, and yes, and immediately. So. Were you looking for something to do, and you found this, and you were excited about it, or did it just ha it happened upon you and you realized, hey, I can go do something? Right. I think it's both. You know, I I started my Twitter uh, handle, um, uh, and I was new to Twitter. I didn't even know. I was like, I've got to figure this out. There's just like, clearly I can do this. You know? It's only 140 characters. Exactly. So. <laughs> you know, if some of these people can do this, I can do this yes. as well. So I learned that, and then um, I was like, you know, this is just, uh, you know, I think you can't if you're a feeling thinking person, you can't watch the news and not be impacted. So I was impacted. Yes, I was looking for a way to make a contribution uh, locally. I like to think globally, but I like to act locally. And so I was like, well, I need to get with somebody. And then this thing came out. I was like, I'm here I am. I'm there ready. You go. There you go. OK. Yeah. So OK, tell us about uh, 808 RAN and People Power. OK. so. Uh, People Power uh, is a grassroots initiative by the ACLU. And so, for instance, the way they explain it is we have, the ACLU has 300 lawyers. The, the United States government has 18,000 lawyers. They need a grassroots to carry messages, to create a conversation. And that's really what we're doing, is uh, creating a conversation about the agenda. How do we feel about it? What can we do about it? And so 808 RAN is a, a collective of people that got together. We were just like, let's form a group. Let's, we don't know what's going on in Hawaii, but we want to do something. And so we got, we called ourselves 808 RAN. We started, you know, uh, investigating the, um, the initiative. We started uh, joining other groups of resistance on the island. Also, I like to call them persistence groups. I mean, we want to persist yes. with that, which is good, yes. you know. Uh, and so we've joined with other groups, uh, Women, Women's March Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, J20, to come together and provide more people towards the causes that we feel are yeah. important. We go to the Senate and and we have something called Resist Trump Tuesday. Resist Trump we, Tuesday. Right. So which we go are, which down. Which are great. Resist Trump Tuesdays are great. And from what I understand, there's also going to be, um, because that's the Resist Trump Tuesday is specifically a, a federal legislator effort where a grouping of people, and I've gone once, a right. group of people get together and they go to our federal legislators. So they go to um, Schatz and, and Hirono and uh, Honobusa and, and Gabbard yes. and talk to them. Yes. So every Tuesday talk to them about some issues, get follow-up on questions they've had previously. And I believe this this week was the 18th or 19th week in a row mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that this group has been going. Right. So that's an important thing. So it's a connection. It's showing up at their offices and asking them, what is your you know, reply to this? What, uh, what is your plan? Uh, you know, how can we get more information and how can we better address what's going on? And this is a direct communication as opposed to waiting for a town hall. Right. right, exactly. Uh, I've heard, and maybe you know the answer or not, but I've heard that they're also planning on do this at the, at the state level, I think on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, I'm not exactly totally familiar with it, but there okay. is, yes. Yeah, so I think that there's a plan for them to do for this grouping or others involved mm -hmm. to get together and start doing the same thing and going door to door at our state legislature. Yes, and uh, that, I, I take that back, that's true. I did go uh, probably uh, last Thursday. Last Thursday, okay. Yes. I see, that, and that's, that's a great thing. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's a form of accountability. That, yes. we, that we otherwise don't, I think, realize we have access to. Yeah, and so uh, that's one of my other um, concerns, you know, just for myself. I was in the military for so long that, you know, that consumed my life. And now I have this uh, time to devote to civics and um, understanding it, learning about the government. Um, even though I worked for it for so long, doesn't mean I'm an expert on it. But I'm, I really feel challenged. I really feel empowered now to uh, raise my voice and talk to people. Because that's really what I want to do, is I want to have a conversation. What's going on? And so that I can tell other people and hopefully affect you know, or keep uh, what we 
really like about um, our government in place and then improve other things. Keep it getting the social consciousness, making sure that there's Absolutely. an awareness throughout social consciousness and that we need all of that. Absolutely. And all of the groups, There's there's been a collection of groups and mm -hmm. they all have a slightly different focus and certainly different people. and. And it's wonderful that there's so much collaboration happening. Sure. Well, uh, you know, what's really great for me is watching the evolution, watching yeah. the evolution of the groups coming together in Hawaii, but also watching uh, the marches, how they're evolving as well, how yeah. people are becoming like, you know, uh, how, do I, how do I really make an impact during these marches? What do I really need to do? What do I need to bring? What do I need to, what do I need to know? And there's so many What do so I write on my there. sign? Absolutely. Like that, you, know, yeah. you know, where do you get the signs at? Yeah. And so uh, it's just... It's really nice yeah, to be around all those people. Like, I, oh, do I need a permit to do this? And, yeah. And what's the? How do I do that? Right. There's so many little bits and pieces that, that 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 are necessary to make those things happen as well. I really like also when you know new groups become involved uh, because everybody essentially is on the agenda, whether you think so or not. Yeah. You know that you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna be impacted in some way. Huge truth to that. Yeah. That it doesn't matter whether what side of the aisle you are on these policies that are national and local affect you. Yes. And we, whether you think it's a positive thing, when suddenly all of these people who voted, and this is what we're about to see coming up soon, all these people who voted for Trump that, that are potentially going to lose their health insurance, let's see how they really feel about that. I don't think that that's what they voted for based on the things he said. He was promising better health care, and mm -hmm. it seems like that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll see how that really impacts. And that's what one of the pieces that we are trying to drive as well as the resistance and persistence crew towards 2018 right. to start affecting that change. So, Absolutely. Um, so yes, there's a lot there. So thank you for sharing how that. Let me ask you this. I, I, didn't, I didn't ask that. Mm -hmm. What branch were you in? Army. And what was your rank? Master Sergeant. Thank you so much for your service. Oh, yeah. I truly course. appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Yes. You know, people thank me, and I was just like, it was great. It was a wild adventure. I loved every moment of it. I loved, uh, you know, affecting soldiers, growing leaders, taking care of Army families. So, yeah, it was yeah. a great career. But now I'm on to something else. Now you're on to something else you've got a passion for, and you have a way. You, you've found a direction. Yes. And a grouping of people, like-minded people, who are trying to make change happen. Absolutely. On a grassroots level. That's been my favorite thing about if there's anything positive about Trump's victory, mm -hmm. it's that it has awoken the sleeping grassroots giants. Absolutely. So that in itself, I think, is, is valuable. I really appreciate that you say that because I, I, I've been telling that to people from the very beginning. I'm like, hey, now we're all talking. We're all like, what, what, what's, we're all woke. What's going on? Exactly, you know? exactly. I, I, what I like to make reference to is how at this point, there are more people involved and engaged and aware mm -hmm. civically than we have had since probably the revolutionary time period when everybody, when that was the conversation. Sure. What's going on? Why is this going on? This tax, that tax, this thing. And then we have a revolution as a result. So more people were aware, so they were ready to do something. Mm -hmm. Well, more people are aware right now, and maybe we haven't had this many this engaged since then. Right. So. I also think that the conversation is really important, too, because it outlines what we had. We didn't know how good we had it until, until it started to be something away. else showed up that was, you know, anti, you yeah. know, it's, uh, yeah, I, I use the terms uh, arrogant and um, prejudice because those, those are big things that people, they can look at and they're like, right. yeah, that doesn't work. Right. And that's what the agenda is. But now we're all sitting back going, hey, it used to be really great. We used to do this. We were on such a great um, uh, path towards, you know, promote, uh, getting, uh, promoting peace, uh, incorporating people, uh, allowing people to reach their maximum potential with the assistance of the government, not right. because of the government. Yeah, and know? not staying there just because that's the whole purpose of it. So Precisely. That, uh, what all of that reminds me of is uh, Benjamin Franklin's quote. Mm -hmm. I will paraphrase it. Um, that uh, those who will give up some freedoms for the sake of some, some freedoms and some liberties, is what mm -hmm. I think he says, for, this, for the sake of some safeties, mm -hmm. deserve neither freedom nor liberty. Yes. And that's where we're at at the moment. All these people who have this fear, and it was fear-mongering that made it all happen. So. Right. Um, anyway, I think we're, we, that was a good introduction conversation, but sure. I think we're pretty close to taking a break at the moment. Okay. So we're going to jump really into 
um, the, the freedom cities versus mm -hmm. the um, sanctuary cities, mm -hmm. and then what the nine model is. And so we'll do that right after this break. So thank you so much for joining us again. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Thank you again to our guest, Miss Sophia Mendoza. We're going to talk more about this. See you in one minute. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. And welcome once again, our guest, Ms. Sophia Mendoza. Uh, so, okay, now we're going to jump right into, okay, we learned a little bit about people power and 808 RAN mm -hmm. and how it's affiliated with the ACLU. It's the grassroots uh, activism around specifically, I think, immigration. Yes. Uh, having to do with ACLU and, and what that comes together. So, um, as promised, we're going to talk about freedom cities. And so tell us about freedom cities and what the differences may be between a freedom city and a sanctuary city. Sure. So the term sanctuary city, um, it, it's, it's been in place for quite a while, obviously. So a sanctuary city is one city that does not, it's a city that um, doesn't go after people to say, what's your immigration status? And no, you can't do this or you can't do that. So uh, because people uh, in sanctuary cities, the governments in sanctuary cities understand the value of immigration, what it brings to their city, um, how it can prosper, et cetera, and the damage that you do when you don't have a freedom city, I mean a sanctuary city. So sanctuary city is an old term. Um, it's still used, you know, a lot of states are creating their own uh, resolutions that they are, in fact, a sanctuary city. Uh, there's also the term welcoming city that people are using, right? right? Uh, some of the cities are using. Uh, right here, right now, uh, ACLU is termed their initiative freedom cities. So if you think about it, if you think about uh, the definition of sanctuary, you think about the definition of freedom, you know, I think it says a lot right there of what we're trying to accomplish. What does it mean to walk down the street as an immigrant even if you're newly, be, you've just newly become a citizen, what does it mean to be free in the city? And one of the ways that uh, the primary initiative here is to interact with the local law enforcement. Are the local law enforcement familiar with whether or not we're a sanctuary city or freedom city or what have you? Okay, so there is no, there's no uh, uh, clear-cut definition on what a sanctuary city is versus a freedom city versus a welcoming city. I think that uh, people are all trying to communicate, look, if you are an immigrant, we welcome you. Okay, right. uh, Freedom cities, because it's uh, uh, an in initiative of the ACLU, goes straight to what does the Constitution of the United States say with regards to your rights and uh, and um, the abilities of the government towards its people um, with regards to freedom. Okay. 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 So it's taking like the next step. Yes. So sanctuary city is you should be safe without somebody coming and harassing you about where you're from. Right. Now it's now that you have that, we're taking it the next step by saying, by the way, here are your rights and here's the expectations. Right. And this is what you should uh, have some some belief in. Yes. So, uh, you know, 
there's there's the Constitution. A lot of people don't necessarily know what their rights are. The ACLU, uh, by having this grassroots of Freedom Cities, is getting people involved to this larger conversation. Really, what is going on with the local police department? Are they familiar? How are they trained? Do they know about these now uh, nine model policies and rules that we like to see in place that create bias-free policing? Uh, bias-free policing, okay. We're gonna get into nine model in a minute, okay. but um, I wanna jump back a little bit. Um, Going back at the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. uh, Governor Ige in the state of Hawaii came out and said that he wants us to be a sanctuary state. Right. Um, and we have this, as everyone knows, we're the, there's that little island in the middle of the Pacific that's causing an impact nationally that they mm -hmm. can't quite understand how that's happening. Um, but as a result, we also have our AG, Doug Chin, mm -hmm. who, is, who has brought court cases and is shutting down that travel ban and is doing everything in his power to keep it as it is so that there are no negative impacts here locally. My question is, or what I know is, but I want to get your thought on mm -hmm. this, is uh, what I know is there was a bill that was introduced to officially declare us a sanctuary state, and it did not pass. Mm -hmm. And what I also know is we're one of the five remaining states in the country that still comply 100% with these immigration ICE rules. Yes. So there's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. And is, that, is there something that within people power, within 808RAN, NACL, is, is there something being talked about with regards to that, how that happened and what we can do? Absolutely. So um, along with... Uh, uh, as a byproduct of Freedom Cities and talking with lo local law enforcement, we are engaging in conversations with the senators and the representatives. And so we wanted to know about, um, I personally wanted to know about the um, resolution that you were talking about to declare ourselves. Uh, oh, it was a resolution, not a bill. Uh, well, it might have been a bill. I, okay. you know, I'm grassroots. I'm, I'm. I think there was one in city council. Right. And I think there might have been one for the state as well. But okay, so there, there's been a couple of things that have been going on. So they, the, the last one that I was involved in was the Ho'opika. Mm -hmm. Ho'opika. Is it Ho'opika? Ho yes. And so that was a resolution to say that we are an Aloha. We are the Aloha State. We are welcoming. And that one did not pass. It's really that should really be a no-brainer because that's more of a confirmation. Absolutely. Of of the state of Hawaii, of the Aloha state, of what Aloha means. Yes, absolutely. But, and yet. So what I'm finding is that oh, so it was it kind of died its death, and now the groups are working together to reintroduce a new resolution along those lines, um, and to get it passed. Now, uh, why it didn't pass? in my opinion, it's politics, you know, and it's also about not uh, necessarily wanting to do the in, uh, deep dive on really what does it mean and what would we lose if we declared ourselves a sanctuary city? I, what would we lose? Okay, exactly. People think that we will lose money because, um, you oh, know, the interpretation. The threat, because the threat from Trump saying that he's going to take something out on. That's my that personal it? opinion. That's my personal opinion, okay, is that when there's a lack of understanding, it's not, and they have so many other resolutions on their docket that they need to get passed before they adjourn, okay, it just, there wasn't the time available to make the, make yeah. the uh, conversations happen, my personal opinion. So again, fear mongering, we're afraid, so right. we have to not do something that, right. that is innate, frankly, with what this community is, because what is Hawaii? Exactly. But, the wellspring of Aloha. The wellspring of Aloha, but also, it's the it's the metropolitan congregation of multiple cultures. Precisely. And many thanks to the Native Hawaiians for still allowing it. Absolutely. As is, there's unfortunately they don't have as much to say about it as they would like. But this... how how is it possible that it is not representative of the state and that more people? are not angry mm -hmm. that we are not making that clear. Right. That seems uh, like problematic to me. Well, but. it was to me as well. And so uh, now I'm more, more um, inclined to remain active simply just to get some of the things that should be uh, put into writing, get them into writing. And that's, I think, one of our downfalls is that we have all these accepted norms, you know. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii is this and Hawaii is that, but it's not written down anywhere. And it's the same with the other states, you know. 
Yeah, the other side of that is, uh, yes, written, written down. Written down, codified in some ways, in this law, that law, and in other, you know, other ways. But then there's also making sure that the people are more aware of what is going on, in which case you're, what you're writing down, you're doing op-eds for those who read the paper. You're yes. doing whatever necessary to get information out. Mm -hmm. Uh, so through outreach programs. So let me. I have to, we're going to jump into the nine model okay. right now. But before I do that, how would people who want to help get engaged and help as far as 808 RAN and People Power? Well, um, you know, there's a lot of groups that are larger than us. Uh, well, first off, PeoplePower.org is you know what you go to the website, sign up, find out where an event is being um, held in your neighborhood, okay. all across the country. 3,000 cities are holding events, looking for people, waiting, asking for people to join them to say, you know what, whatever you can bring to the table, bring it. You yeah. know what, we will find a place for you, no problem what whatsoever. What we need is energy. That's right. Energy and, and willingness to be active. Right, and it, it's really yeah. the consistency because they're waiting for the resistance to die. You know, yeah. they're like... Uh, hoping. Hoping, frankly. yeah, <laughs> hoping uh, that, you know, we'll go away. But uh, we can't. We can't afford to go away. I, I don't think that it. I, I, in my opinion, the resistance isn't going anywhere. Uh, there's strong, strong desire, and too many people who are woke yeah. to just let it go now. And the more things happen, and unfortunately, yeah, we do get sidelined a little bit by some of the circus theatrics that go on. But we're not really losing ground when it comes to the people who want to change, who want to keep us on the track we were on or get us back on that track. So, okay, let's talk. We only have a few more minutes sure. left. So let's talk about the nine model right. and what that is and, and how that is implemented. Okay, so the nine model is nine model policies and rules that um, law enforcement uh, agencies from around the country have agreed that these are some of their best practices. So, okay, it's best practices. It's law enforcement best practices? Um, I, I guess uh, I just want to, I'll just term it policies and rules. So, um, and it, it all goes together with really with the law as it is, okay? Is, is it like um, guidelines to how to approach? Yes. Like uh, in, in, in any, in, it's all based on immigration. Yes, these are all based on immigration. So number one, um, there are nine of them and the intent is to defend our families, friends and neighbors from Trump's mass deportation deportation agenda, uh, to protect their privacy from the Trump administration, and to help our friends and families and neighbors get redress when abuses or mistakes occur. Okay. Okay, so. So, um, uh, so this is all, uh, we only, again, this is it's gone really quickly, we only yeah. have a short time left. So uh, just to focus in, so there, it's, it's nine principles or nine guidelines mm -hmm. that Hawaii Police Department agrees with? As far as their We want to uh, have dialogue with the mayor, with the police commission, and the police chief. You want to, but are you? We're trying. And you have not yet been given that access. Um, so I've met with the, I've, I've provided public testimony to the police commission twice. Still waiting to get seen by the police chief. But this, the co-chairs. Well, we're, also, we're about to get a new police chief, right? Right. And so the co-chairs of the police commission have said, we would like a follow-up to find out exactly how your meeting went and you know, what, what transpired. Yeah. Okay. Un unfortunately, the show is over. The, this, so, okay, go to peoplepower.org. Right. Uh, you can go to 808 RAN on Facebook. Uh, you can look these up. It's the nine model ACLU. We have to close the show. That's right. We're in this camera today. We have to close the show. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Mover Shakers and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. Thank you again to our guest today, Ms. Sophia Mendoza, talking about all of these important issues. So thank you for joining us. See you next time.